Hands off into his wind, and the first pitch is driven out to right with some carry. On the run, that ball is up, and it is out of here. First pitch ambushed by Mooney, and it's a leadoff home run. Just a great swing by Mooney. You know, typically you're not gonna you're, you're not gonna expect a leadoff hitter to swing at the first pitch of the game. Uh, Duke scouting report must be that Huff likes to throw fastballs early in the count. Mooney's a guy that does have power. He does what you're supposed to do when you swing at the leadoff pitch of a game. You hit it hard, and not only did he do that, but he got Duke the first run of the game as well. Third home run of the season as he goes opposite field on the fastball at 95. For him, Andy, the whole season is if he can get into the fifth inning, sixth inning, he's oh. typically had good outings. Oh, Paulie got clipped. So a hit by pitch on 0-2 brings him aboard. Four as well as is the catch and throw aspect. That ball is driven into the opposite field for a base hit. So Mooney with the leadoff home run. And after the hit by pitch, Shrek able to deliver on two strikes. Still nobody out. The Blue Devils have him at first and second. Runners both in motion. Parada guns to second, and he throws it into center field. That'll enable Pauly to scramble up from third and score, and it's now 2 0. It's the air and throw by Parada with both runners going, and Duke able to extend the lead. Knight might be green lighted with another blast deep to left. A hanger, a banger, and a two run homer. And what a start for the Blue Devils. A pair of home runs in the first, still nobody out, and they stress the lead to 4-0. Yeah, and it all goes back to that 0-2 hit by pitch on Pauly. I mean, Huff looked like he had settled and gotten back in there, refocused, and he you know, gets the hit by pitch, and now it's all kind of falling apart. Knight saw the slider 3-0. You know, got a good look at it. 3-1 pitch is the exact same. It's hung right down the middle, and, and this time he pulls the trigger and, and didn't miss it. Is Johnson throw up a zero for Duke. Bobbled off the chest of Hoyle, and he will have no recovery. Little top spin on that grounder from Simpson, and he's able to reach. Simpson takes off, throw by you, bounces in front of second. It's picked nicely by Mooney. But Simpson swipes his 14th base of the year. And he got a great jump, just timed this one up. and In the dirt, skips away. Simpson bolting for third, and he beats it out. Takes 90 on the wild pitch. And the catcher. Ground ball, and he shoots it through for the RBI. Now they had swung the infield to the pole side for Gonzalez. Keeps the bat head low and sends it into left center and the Jackets are on the board. Because he's on third base. Ball hammered by Borden toward the foul pole and gone. And it's now four to three. And the ACC player of the week stays hot. Yeah, and this is a mistake pitch by Johnson. Just a hanging breaking ball. And, you know, Borden saw it the pitch before and took it. And this time doesn't miss it. Just a great swing, stays right on it, back spins it down the left field line for an easy home run. They call him Timmy Barrels at Georgia Tech, and you can see why Denson sighting over the indoor practice facility. Shut down inning. That is roped into right, cut off by Reed, but a solid single by Hoyle. And a fifth hit of the night already. Goodies tonight for him. Hot shot on one hop, it's speared at second by Jackson. Relay to first, 6-4-3. To beat a speedy OB up the line, and that's why Jaden Jackson. To him for being able to lay off that pitch. And he'll take his base on the walk to extend the inning. No move by Mooney, and that ball is drilled by Pauly. Deep to right, track, wall gone. So the Jackets pounded a two-run homer with two outs in the bottom of the first, top of the second. It's the Blue Devils' turn. And they make it 6-3. And then just, you know, kind of how the inning went for Duke in the bottom of the first. This is what it's gone for Georgia Tech. You know, you get two outs on a double play. Feel like you're close to getting your guys back in the dugout. Walk a guy with two outs. And then really, it's not, doesn't make a bad pitch. Just a change up on the outer third of the plate 
Polly just does a great job of staying on this. Every once in a while, he he cuts it. It's probably not something he's trying to do, but can be something that's effective, especially when thrown to the inside of left-handed hitters. Got to hope he either hits one right at a guy. Good discipline. Doesn't chase high and outside. Yanks it over the glove of Pauly and into left. Reed gets the call through third. No throw in. And Kevin Parada, you can get him to two strikes. You can get it to two outs. But he still finds a way to come through, and it's 6-4. to four. I was worried about it. Swing and a miss. Ball bounces away. Retrieved by you. Tosses across and in time to complete the strikeout and retire the side. A lineup that is very dangerous. Swinging and hammering into right field. It is sinking it off the top of the wall. Lux charging in to retrieve it. Compton eases into second, inches away from a home run. It when it's not. Hard hit ground ball, past the dive of Hoyle and into right field. Compton windmilled through third. And no throw home. He slides in. And Georgia Tech plays a fifth run with two outs. This one from Colin Hall to make it 6-5. Yeah, Georgia Tech's been really good so far this game. Swung out and missed. Got him chasing low. And so Johnson strikes out the side. Like it's actually springtime. When Obi gets drilled on the first pitch. And that's not the way you'd want the inning to start if you're Georgia Tech. And the zone nowhere to be found. For Brown, first and second, once again with nobody out for Duke. You know, a little bit off, a little bit in. Rolled off a of first and it squeezes through. We'll see what they do with Obi. They send him around. Run comes in at the corners. And Duke gets a run back to make it 7-5. Shrek, who's two for two. Couldn't time the off speed. Lifts it into left center. We'll see what they do with the lead runner. Catch made by Gonzalez. Runner tags. And the throw gets cut off. And after Georgia Tech got the run back to pull within one, Duke right back to work with two runs here in the fourth. First Johnson to throw two more in a row. Misses downstairs, and the walk brings Jackson aboard. They're going to want to. Yanked off a third, it skips off the heel of Pauly's glove. Stays in foul territory. Jenkins hustles into second ahead of the tag. And once again, Georgia Tech Stroke and smoke with two outs. It's 8-6. Yeah, and it, you, you just have to know when you have two chances from Parada and Jenkins to get a run in, they're probably going to get them in. Jenkins, Johnson really just hangs this slider right over the heart of the plate. Tough pop at third base. And this is why Jenkins is so well respected on the team. Not only does he hit the ball hard. Sent in the air to right center field. Dead run. OB makes the catch. Flags it down. You know, I mean, he, he, he started and gone two or three innings out of the bullpen. So always, you know, it seems like every season is tops in the country and runs scored and crushed into center. Ground rule double. As it hops over, and they're going to have to hold up the lead runner Storm at third. But given a ride by Lux, a deluxe fly ball. Yeah, the right to get it to the outfield and potentially get a sack fly. Oh, that's a beauty of a squeeze. Parada guns it high. Runner is safe, and the run scores. And it's now 9-6. The bunt by Hoyle flat deadened out, and he reaches. Yeah, and, and really, you know, uncharacteristic. You know, typically you want this ball to the first base side, but Hoyle does a great job, like you said, Andy, of deadening it just enough out front of home plate where Parada, you know, can't make a play on the runner at third and still a tough play to get Hoyle who can really run at first base. You, know, you see Parada barehand this kind of takes a little bit to get rid of it. Be another a bunt here. Pass third and fair. It'll score two. Fist out of the corner by Gonzalez. Obi sneaks one down the line. And now Duke has its largest lead. It's 11 to 6. Yeah, and kind of the worst case scenario for Georgia Tech. I mean, Obi does a great job. You know, gets a breaking ball in the middle of the plate and just gets enough of it, keeps it fair enough to get it down the line and easily score two and another runner in scoring position for Duke. Got underneath it. 
underspin fly ball. It's caught by Parada. And the inning is over. Parada knocks one into left base hit. That's what Georgia Tech needed. You know, if they're going to get back in this game, you've got to figure they need to scratch across a few here in 10, 15 minutes from now. Popped up, short right, Storm ranging over. It'll fall for a base hit. Right off the hands by Jenkins. That's now, when you're hitting close to 500 <laughs> in ACC play, the ball just finds a way to get to you aboard. Bunting knocks it up the line. Yu has to turn around on it. The throw is not in time. And a sacrifice turns into a bunt single for Gonzalez. They're loaded with still nobody out. Instead, it is taken and tagged. Grand slam off the light pole for Compton. And it's a one-run game in the seventh. Oh, and did that ever detonate off the bat of Drew Compton? Yeah, I mean, really kind of a confounding pitch, Andy. I mean, you had so much success against Borden with the off-speed. And Compton is a guy, especially from the right side, he can struggle with breaking pitches and change-ups. And they go with two fastballs in a row to him. I didn't think there was any chance he was going to get a fastball here. And he does a great job of getting a fastball in the middle of the plate and not missing it. But again, just kind of a weird sequence of pitches. Scalded up the middle, a base hit by Hall. And so now the game tying run is on base for the Jackets on Hall's second hit of the night. Keep them with the lead. First pitch swing and a sinking liner by Reed and it drops in. So Stephen Reed wasting no time with a hard hit single. The window and so. And it is officially tossed out. So Jackson reaches on the four pitch walk and they are loaded again. To go home because there's just not a lot of a chance of doubling him off. Fly ball right field laying out making the diving catches Lux. Hall sent in he scores. A big diving grab by Lux, but it's not enough to prevent the tying run from coming in. Yeah, and this, just a great swing by Simpson. He does his job. You know, a great diving catch and right in a situation like this. Ground ball scalded but snared. Storm runs it over, retires Parada. Inning over. Like you said, you know, probably has. Drives it into the gap in right center. It's cut off by Lux. Reed settles in with a single. How about the hustle by Lux to hold him without an extra base, though? The 3 2. Cut on. Fly ball. Galloping over his Lux, and he has it measured. Pulls it in. A deep fly by Simpson, but couldn't get it down. And both teams come up empty in the ninth. Against a guy with really elite stuff. Ooh, watch out. Oh, man. On the helmet, Mooney, is he okay? It looks like he is, but good heavens. That was 98 to the dome. And thank goodness he's brushing it off. Ball off of a pitch that was up out of the zone. Roll to short. Shovel not in time. Why well, Jackson trying to go the short route instead of firing across. And now they're at first and second. Here it comes. And the dirt gets away. So walk will load the bases. All still in place, so Parada has to retrieve it. The 2-2. Oh, he broke it off. Strike three looking. Went with the slide piece. And Zach Maxwell slide. So. Stroked deep left. And it will get down past the dive of Obi. It has to be retrieved by Shrek. Jenkins in second, and he's in scoring position. As he crushed it. On the two-strike pitch. Ground ball, and it gets through base hit. Here comes Jenkins. There won't be a throw. Compton started the rally, and he ends it with the walk-off. 12, 10 jackets in 10 innings, and Compton, the hero in the opener.